applied to the ceramic, you get this beautiful, not only the cross-hassing texture, but that area that is solid, again, sort of like what happens with water, where you will see pieces that feel more transparent, translucent, and pieces that, and areas that feel more opaque. And this mix and match of that texture and that solid and the matte to the shine, all of that, I think, really speaks to the true uh, depths of what Watershed is about. And then when you move into your paintings as well, this whole idea of being able to bring color in through wall art and nature as a reference is always important. And so I loved what was happening here in this particular painting, but again, also on, in these vases that took that teal uh, as a base, but then played it back off against the warmer trend that we've been talking about, which is to bring in these warm sort of brown, the warm browns, nutty, chocolatey browns, and also those hot uh, lava oranges that we've been talking a great deal about and how both of those play very nicely from the vase back to the wall art. Well, you know, Patty, even like that wall art, you know, all the texture, even in the vases, it's yes. all about projecting movement mm -hmm. and the movement of those pieces. And just in that texture, I think draws people's emotions out. I think it Absolutely. could be really quite, you know, heartening to look at something in your own home and say, well, I may not have a garden, I may not have a balcony, but that, that piece of art kind of gives you the illusion that you're in the garden because it's not flat, mm -hmm. it's very textured. Mm -hmm. No, that's wonderful. I, I love the, there's such energy in that particular piece. I, I was drawn to it immediately. Yeah. And then as we move into these others, perhaps we wanna talk about these two pieces on campus as well. Well, the, can, the one that's on the left, oddly enough, was my view out my window of my kitchen at 45th and 8th, ah. which we were just talking about. Absolutely. Uh, so it's like, you know, it's things that you come across that strike something in yourself. You know, it's that image that I adored at looking out that window and you, you could not see it in the image, but you could barely see probably only a branch, but we always like to say we were right on Central Park. <laughs> but, but we saw a branch and you know, even the sword that to the right, it's it's all about the imagery and the texture and you know because our paintings are all done by hand mm -hmm. you know all of them you know will be unique they'll yes. be slightly different um, so that's something that i think that a lot of people don't realize with the artwork as we grow that um, you know you're going to find pieces that are a little more unique for a client or for the retail store i think that you know, that texture is the thing that's really going to draw them into it. Absolutely. And I love the play of these two together when I pulled them because I love the, the, the sort of um, the darkness of the, and, the, and the geometry of the buildings and, and the color, the way the color is more evocative of shadow in the, on the left and then how it's and fun. Somebody's, un, uh, somebody's got a lot of motion happening. <laughs> and we're yeah. hearing you. As everybody <laughs> mute. Um, and then the one on the right where you have this port sort of just free form, you can sort of bring whatever you want to bring to the, to, the, to the images, you know, that we're seeing on the canvas and they can speak to you in whatever way they do. But right. again, the way that, that use of that beautiful teal color kind of grounds it, um, but that it's not flat, like most colors in nature are not found flat, that there's a motion and an ombre and a movement to the color, to the bars of color. Right. It was really beautiful. And then we move to the, to the textiles, one of my favorite areas in home decor, because that always adds warmth. That always adds, um, again, another touch of personality. And what I loved about this particular patterning was not only sort of this circular pattern that spoke to you, but the fact that it does have this sense of movement and turning. Um, and, but this, then again, that sort of beautiful watershed turquoise with this beautiful sort of stormy gray. And the chain stitch really gives you that, that texture that ring, brings it up, up, up off the surface. I just thought this was really quite beautiful and kind of evocative as we talk about watershed of the bubbles that dance, you know, along the water. And then um, moving into this, this piece where we just sort of sing the room, how one can use touches of this color along with other kinds of materials like your beautiful mirrors, your side, you know, your side of occasional tables. And then just by popping it with, with uh, textiles in, in throws or pillows, you can bring in that touch of color. Or if you're more adventurous, putting that wonderful texture on that back wall. And then we move into the next color, which is blue skies. And as we talk about sort of moving out of this time of COVID, 
hopefully moving past all of these peaceful protests into some change. This whole idea of blue skies and the color range of blue has become really, really important. If you think about it, blue skies cover us all. We're all looking at that same blue sky everywhere in the world. It may not be the same at the same time that we have the same weather, but it's that sense of calm, of trusting uh, that, that blue brings. Uh, the, one of the reasons that, that Pantone uh, selected that classic blue as the color of the year, because it's something that really is uh, uniting us. It's a trustworthy color. Blue's the favorite color, the, the number one favorite color around the world. And what I loved about the kinds of things that we were seeing when we went through the shows in blue was that you saw this beautiful chambray blue, which is not quite the color of the classic blue. And I particularly like this chambray, chambray and lighter ranges of blues because chambray comes from the denim, the way we've been, we've moved through the dark denims and now into the washed denims on the runway, that sense of casualness that the United States has that we have now transported around the world um, you know, things are a little less uptight. People aren't dressing up to go to their to work um, as they used to. And now we're certainly going to see some big changes there. But the idea that this particular blue hue really looks beautiful no matter what you put it on. So from very casual tabletop and down in the lower left, planters on the upper right, you know, statuary that's more formal or more fun in the center. One of my favorite pieces uh, that was taken at Maison Objet, that one dead center where this beautiful um, ceramicist, a woman, um, put all of these different colors inside these pieces that looked like they were cracked open shells almost, and the color was bursting forth. And I love the way she attached each drop with wire. This, these were meticulously made and no two were the same, but she found these incredible ranges of color that she put inside. And moving from that over to the pillows, whether you're looking at it in a solid color with a slight texture like the one on the on the center row on the left, or you, whether you utilize it with a range of those blues and teals coming together like the velvets on the top left. We then talk about blue breezes. Um, one of the things that we definitely see coming forward is working with these beautiful mid-range sort of tie-dyed, dip-dyed, all of those kinds of things are coming through on textiles and we're also seeing it come through in ceramics. Um, we're seeing a lot of it for accent pieces for the table and um, for the kitchen and also as, as objet d'art. And I love the way that this shows the artistry of the artisans by being able to replicate that idea of how one dyes a textile or puts a hand painting on a textile into these wonderful ceramic pieces pieces. They really recall the indigo type dyeing that really grounds us and has been around almost since the dawn of, of textile uh, work. And then last but not least, as we looked at the color blue, we saw this gorgeous misted ombre where we go into the pale sort of uh, looking at, at, the, at the blue uh, mountains and the blue water through almost a mist, this sense of the color rising up and moving through the material, which I really thought was quite wonderful. Um, and so this is some, these are different things that we found in trade shows from around the world, but whether it's wall panels that you see there in sheer that have sort of a watery pattern projected on them to the surrounding ceramics where the blue moves up and dissipates into the white or from the center uh, as it is on the top left and moving out to things that are more, uh, you know, recalling those, those scenic pieces in nature where you're sort of living in the fog or the mist of the early morning. This kind of beauty of blue really is quite wonderful. And so as I looked at your product, I found several things that really caught my eye. Uh, the first was these two sets of, um, of ceramics. The top set on the shelf where you see the blue again sort of moving up just like those blue breezes that we just discussed almost in a dyed almost like a textile dyed pattern. But then in the collection on the bottom, I loved just that sort of striated blue, the way it moves from top to bottom. And then that hint of the warm tones as the opposite, you know, the opposite complementary colors that really bring that motion and energy to the center of the piece. I just thought these collections were really quite stunning. And here, as you talk about how you use it on your antique furniture and on your mirrors, would you like to talk about that a bit, Jody? Yeah, some of these pieces that we came out with or we're getting ready to come out with for, uh, you'll see in High Point, anybody that's there, um, were actually, they were antique pieces that inspired us to come out with some pieces that worked well with today's living. They're sized appropriately for a little more, um, you know, refined spaces that people don't have big entryways, this console piece would fit perfectly. 
it's scaled down for the depth and for the width, um, you know, your traditional height. But what it was about these is that it's the detail to the craftsmanship. It's really taking sort of an old world workmanship and really applying it here for today's living. And that was our biggest draw with the new tables are, I think there's five in a collection mm -hmm. and each one is unique mm -hmm. and they all really do fit today's lifestyle. Yeah, no, I loved what this table looked like. The rubbing of the color yeah. again speaks to me to that, you know, that, that touch of the rustic mm -hmm. antique, but sort of bringing it a little bit more modern by adding the, the way that this one is, is, is rubbed is really quite interesting. And again, evocative almost of how one would dye a textile or a fabric and then that mirror above it just beautiful beautiful thank you and then one of my favorite pieces um it, it in color it's because it is in the blue range that i wanted to include it but i also just loved the whole idea of how modern this piece looks with its reference to the antique and the scale of the the the, the scroll work around it and i wanted you to speak a bit about how this is done because i was so surprised when we were talking and i, when I pulled this piece um by what you were telling me about how the, the techniques to do it if that's something you want to talk about yeah, actually, it is a material that it's two components that are in two tanks that kind of get pumped into a mold. And the chemical reaction between the two elements actually form this foam. And we're able to do the detailing of it, um, you know, because the craftsmanship of hand carving it's still very out there and I think we're seeing where that some of that is starting to really gain in our industry back again. Mm -hmm. But again, this is something that we wanted to play with because we have a, a, a color a custom program that we offer. And so we've got like 51 styles of mirrors. We've got, I think 14 or 13 colors that we offer. Um, so it gives the buyer something to use as a pop of color. Oh, and you know, you've got like those striations and some of the, the finishing where that it's distressed. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody is going to go with that and you want that boldness, that, mm -hmm. that color that's going to just pick up that hint in the wallpaper or your favorite fabric in the chair. But I think this just fits totally. Oh, it's wonderful. It's a fabulous statement piece. This is a piece I would love to own. <laughs> and then we move on to these pearlized uh, candle holders, which again, speak very much to that misted, um, uh, blue misted that I just, uh, tech, you know, trend that I was just talking about, that sense of the color moving up the piece. But also as we, you know, for me looking at this, I was just drawn into, there's such a lovely sort of gentle movement in the stem and it really is evocative of nature for me. And it, it draws you in, it's, they're very elegant. Um, I didn't know if you wanted to, to talk a bit about them. I love the reflection of light in the pearlized, you know, use of the glass. And so tell us a bit about that one. Well, when we start to look at some of the designs, you know, one of the biggest inspirations that we've had or I've had over the years is really from nature, you know, and knowing that, you know, you've got the base of these candle holders that look like a lotus leaf and then you've got that graceful stem that comes up in the pods of the lotus, you know, and it just, you draw every day from nature all around you. So, but then our big task is how could we finish them? How could we keep the movement going and playing off of light? And I think that the pearlized top really plays off of the light as you use it for a candle holder and the cast aluminum on the bottom. I mean, it just, it again has that rough texture slightly to play off of the smooth texture from mm -hmm. up at the top with the pearlized. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that. That's a lovely combination. Mm -hmm. And then we move here to this wonder, again, the mirror, and again, this great, the, the great textile uh, in this pillow, which is sort of, you, you get the, the blue and the teals, again, that, that feeling of, of looking at, at nature, but, but up really close almost, so that you really sort of, it, it loses its, its specific form and, we just come, and just becomes this wonderful pattern in these range of blues. Well, one of the things we did do, like that that last slide, the Torino, mm -hmm. is an it's a mirror we've had in the in the line before. We've done it in a clear mirror. One of the things that we always look at is 
how could we take some of our current styles and how could we update it? Because mm. as the time has gone by, you know, every style doesn't always stay in. So what we do is we try to say, okay, here's this lovely mirror with all the beveling, but how could we give it a new look that is maybe a little more contemporary, a little more modern? And yeah. so we came up with the smoked mirror that I think kind of really lends itself to more of a contemporary feel. Exactly. And it's done very well since we introduced it. Yeah, I love the idea of, of returning to your sources and the things that that to me is sort of how you speak to the brand DNA, how you mm -hmm. keep things, you know, sort of fresh um, by re-looking at them, that they aren't thrown out. This is a whole, the way that we should be looking at everything is, you know, if you come up with a wonderful design, there's no, there's no reason to get rid of it, but maybe there is some reason, some ways to update it. And that's the yes. thing that, that I think, you know, is, a, is, a, is the, the, the best way to work right. personally. Yeah. And then as we continue on, we're just sort of talking about the, you know, again, your, your beautiful wall art and this whole idea of this particular one that was inspired by the waves. So again, returning to those levels of blue, but also those levels of teals as you move deeper out into the ocean. So I think this one really sort of captured everything perfectly. And then we move into the next color, which is smoke and mirrors, which is the continuation of the grays and this whole idea of these misty grays, which we had been, we first talked about them as, as sort of misted, the sense of um, looking at, uh, as, at um, swirls of smoke as they moved up or at, as, as fog rose from the ground. This, again, it's a very natural color gray. It's a little bit warm and gray certainly isn't necessarily trending because gray is one of those colors that's going to be with us. It's certainly a stable color that will be here always so how do you sort of do the subtle things to it and with it that that push it forward and make it continue to look you know keeping it looking fresh i loved what we saw at some of the some of the shows <coughs> um as we move through, excuse me, where you see some of these beautiful rounded forms, this whole idea of, of texture brought in, this idea also of um, matte, again, these matte finishes that are light absorbing. We really aren't seeing a lot of things that have a lot of, of high luster and reflectiveness. I think these, feel, these types of finishes make us feel more warm and more comforted. And then we also moved it forward as we, as we saw from these very last shows, just before everything closed into the color that we called vape, which again, this misted smoky gray. Um, but I love the way that, that people, um, you know, different, different people looked at it with shape, with form, with color, with texture. Um, especially that group of vases up on the top left. I just thought those were really interesting. They're a wonderful mix of sort of modernity and brutalism. Next to that, that's actually a leather mirror, which I think is, you know, something that's really interesting. Found at one of the, at the Maison Show in, in, um, in our craft area, a young woman that, that does these where all that leather has a lot of texture on it when you're up close to it. And she does these great sort of organic shapes with them. And then all of the different finishes of the types, even if you just look at one material at velvet, these three different types of, of patterning that one can put on it, but in this very sort of stabilizing gray means that it can speak to a lot of different uh, home decor aesthetics and, and be on trend at the same time. And so from you, the first thing that I, I landed on that I loved, uh, this is one of my favorite pieces that you do is this beautiful inlaid bone um, cabinet and, and uh, console. I just think both of these are wonderful and speak to uh, this whole idea of craftsmanship. The, the, you know, the amount of time and technique that it takes to inlay these things is just so astounding to me. And they, 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 this one just came off beautifully. And there's also movement in that piece. Yes. You know, the way that we designed that pattern, it's, you know, even though that you know, you've got probably four or five different shades of colors in that piece. You, the way it laid out, you feel like that it has movement to it. Mm -hmm. And I think people are really gravitating toward that. Yeah, no, I love this sunburst, this sunburst, um, I love the name too, the Aurora, uh, but it's just that sense of, again, motion and, and movement and, and energy um, and emotion, all of those things that really draw you to something. And then on the other side of that is this wonderful, very simplistic graphic pattern that comes through in this beautiful ottoman. But it's the whole idea for me, I love the welting on the outside so that you get a bit more texture. I love the type of material that you've used so you have the highs and lows of the brocade in the weave, you know, and the whole idea that you, you're doing this in, you know, at home in the U.S., I think is really wonderful as well. Gives us some, you know, a, a one more thing that people will resonate with that made in the USA. Yeah. 
And then we go into top brass. And this is where we're sort of talking about the types of metallics we're seeing that are going to be important. And we've been talking about brass certainly for a couple of years now. But one of the things that I wanted to call out here was as we talk about what's happening after COVID, copper and brass are both materials because they come from the same base that uh, have antimicrobial features. And I think we're going to see more and more people building safety and protection into their products. So this is one of the ways that you might think about doing it. It's like by using uh, the actual metal of brass. But we also see the color gold in general continuing to be important, but note that it's a lustrous color. It's not high, highly shiny um, or too, too highly reflective. It does give you light play, which is what I think is what makes it interesting. It, the light kind of dances across the surface and depending on the source of the light, it moves and you get this sense of, of, of life with, and warmth within these products. And I think that that's something that's really important. And so in looking through and seeing what you're doing with this, I really love this whole idea of the different ways in which you're using gold. Yeah. Well, we have options of, we do polished, we can do, um, we can do striations into the gold, we can do something that's more of a matte finish. I think that the gold tones have picked up incredibly for the last couple of years. I yeah. think that we're seeing now that, you know, people do want a little bit of that warmth that gold and copper give you. Yes. So we're really expanding a lot on the line with that. Oh, good. That's wonderful. Yeah. I think they're, that's really great. I love these two pieces together, the table and the mirror. The mirror I thought was really lovely. Again, one of the things we've been talking about, sort of rounding the edges, taking the edge off in these anxious times. And I thought that really spoke very cleanly uh, and clearly to that trend, as well as just being a stunning piece. And then from the flip side, something that, you know, that one's more open, uh, having air move through with the two bars. And here you have a piece that really is just so solid and gorgeous. Um, but I love the high-low effect of the finishing, um, where you get this sense of it's not perfect, it's not pristine. It has had, you know, it, it has some life to it. it. It gives it, but yet again, the gold is not too bright and shiny. It has luster. And then from the very modern pieces to these pieces that are you know, evocative of antique pieces, but that luster has been taken down and that beautiful warmth uh, of this tone, which has a brown sort of undertone. Again, that sense of, of, of um, nuanced color coming through in that beautiful ornate work uh, around uh, the edges of this that, that sort of can hang in a very modern space or in a very classic space as well, traditional space. And then when we move into the textiles, you're seeing those kinds of patterning that also can be evocative of something that, that, that has, has a bit you know, of an antique um, inspiration, but can still, because of the scale, I think, look very modern. And the idea of, the, again, the, the, the highs and lows of the color give you the gold on, on white. And, and from what I understand, you also do it on a black ground as well. Yes. Which is great. I think this is beautiful. And then this is one of my favorite pieces, this new small cocktail table, so architectural, so simple, just so clean, the lines so beautiful, and that weight of color where it has just a hint of rose in it, so it's almost the rose gold in the, in, in the color that you've achieved through this brush brass finish. And then we go into print pattern and surface design. And the first one we're talking about is this whole idea of a new angle. We've been saying that things have been, you know, we sort of talked a great deal about taking the edge off in these rounded corners. Well, there's always a counterpoint to everything and the angles certainly are continuing. And when we first started talking about them, we saw them this way. Uh, and you can see them in everything from very simple, I uh, love the vase on the upper right that, that's shaped like a bottle that can either be a vase with water placed in that, that uh, reservoir in the center, or it can hold a tea light. So it's one of those things that has multifunction. This is also something we've been talking a great deal about in terms of how we'll emerge from COVID. People are looking for things that, that are beautiful, but that have a function. And so they will leave them out, but they want them to be a part of their decor and to speak to their personal aesthetics. Next to that, I love that group of lighting where you can um, create your own pieces by adding and subtracting. But I love the way that those angles play against each other. All of the mirrors that you see here 
with those angles that are sort of evocative of gemstones and and cuts in in gems and then down at the bottom those candle holders on the table that are angular and that wonderful work uh on the legs of that stool where they're they they're the angles are coming together and 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 uh, undulating in and out of each other and that took us into our next trend which we called interesting intersections where we saw on the one hand those the previous ones were very calculated um and very precise but we all but what we also coming through was something that was a bit more abstract a bit bit more free-flowing had a bit more humor and a bit more frivolity and so you can see it in the textiles in the seating you can see it in the way that the metal was seamed on the pieces in the center or on the on the pillow on the side on the left or even the way that those uh what we were calling the petite seats that can be used as either seatings or stools which we'll see more from you later um well uh, those were almost done like the the cross hatchings of a chain link fence but once you put them into white and give them a bit of an arc on the side it really makes them very modern and then the, the ceramics there on the bottom almost looked as though they've been bound by by twine or wire or something while they were cast so you get these wonderful interesting intersections crossing through them and as i look through what you were doing i this is one of my favorite pieces too this table is just wonderful can you talk a bit about this and how this came to be well, you know, as a child, you know, getting kind of like shoved off to just play with my, play with my own stuff. Um, you know, we had this little um, spirograph and it was just those, those whole things of, you know, using geometry, but, you know, creating depth. And, you know, even though that was like torment for me as a child, having to be like shut off by myself. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it actually something good came out of it because it was one of the things that we draw from a lot. And yeah. you see it further in mirrors that it adds depth to a design that it's not so flat, one dimensional. You've got that three dimensional feel for something. Yeah. So I think that that whole kind of experience has, you know, like you've been showing, you've seen it out there. And I think it's still going to be strong as we move on. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I had a spirograph as well. And conversely to you, I loved it. I used to play with that all the time, but I was raised as an artistic kid. So art, <laughs> I was always doing something artistic. But this was, I, as soon as I saw this, that's the first thing I thought of. And when I talked to you, you said, yes, that's from my childhood. From my oh, absolutely. Yes. Like, yeah, this is great. <laughs> But this one, I mean, this really speaks to me to to um, craftsmanship because the, there is a lot of geometry, uh, you know, to put this together and to have that twist be just so and to have the pieces splay in just the right the right way across the top and the base. This is just a, a really perfect piece. But again, we did size that for today's living. Oh. You know, we actually really wanted these pieces that we're starting to come out with uh, to really reflect in the way that someone lives now. Yeah. So not necessarily you follow a formula, but you now you, you size it and, and you give the space necessary for the design to be appreciated, but it fits today's living. Absolutely. And that's the same thing I think with all of these pieces here. I love the base of the table, the way this, this particular type of chair, these mm -hmm. caged sort of almost campaign chairs that have been moved into a very modern way with metal arms and wooden arms and things like that. I think that chair again is really quite wonderful. One of my, another one of my favorite pieces. And then the vase with just this wonderful abandon of the application of the, of the uh, patterning um, is just, is just great. And then those Little little squares, little touches um, that come in on the warm again the warm side of the palette palette help to just add some more depth and energy to it. And we see some more from that same collection, but in other shapes. Which I also love that you do not everything is exactly the same. You know, a, der a derivation of the same form when you utilize a particular uh, pattern in your vases. And I think that really gives gives your cons your consumer a way to to play with it and use it in different parts and places within their spaces. Um, and then this tape, this table again, where that wonderful, interesting intersections happens at the base with the two pyramids sort of intersecting each other. And then when you move to the to the next ones, we see just the way that the legs 
Um, the, it's very simple. Um, this is one of the things that I loved. It's very simple, the way that you just put one leg going in one direction and two coming in the other to create that interesting intersection and balance um, the, and form, uh, you know, beautiful architectural form on that table. But then also, also some of these mirrors where it's a much more geometric and much more classic take on the intersections and the top piece where the art, you know, it's wall art where it's a much more modern and contemporary take on the intersections. And then these with the mirrors, I think this is what you're referring to. These really speak to the, you know, the first, the first slide that I showed with this whole idea of these interesting angles and interesting intersections that really kind of cage, um, the, you know, and enclose the mirror itself. I just think those are beautiful. But then also the way that these intersections happen on the painting. So something very graphic, something very stark um, that can really sit in any number of places. Yeah, everybody seems to be looking for depth. You yes, know, and texture. Yes. yes, and then even here in this textile, I love, this is one of my favorite textiles that I've seen uh, for the season. I love the way that you've incorporated both that wonderful sort of magenta pink, which is one of the colors we've been talking about a great deal, all the sort of plums and pinks uh, and wine type tones uh, that are really important. The herbal and vegetal greens, and there you've got the herbal green in there. You've grounded in that beautiful misty vapey gray, and then that black that really adds solidity, but all of these wonderful inter interesting intersections in this very sort of modernist painting come to life in pillows. And then again, this, this table in, as you can see it now in a couple of different colorways and how you have the side table that works with it. And so the depth of the pyramids shifting, but also just the inter interesting intersections even on the pillows uh, that you see placed there. So there's, and, and, and even in the, the carpet that's here. So there's definitely different ways that you can bring it into your space. And I loved this particular image because it showed you, you know, several different ways to think about the, this particular trend. Yeah. And then we move to one of my favorites, isn't it organic? This is really a trend about the idea of the natural form of things, not trying to make them perfect. Not, um, you know, except the beauty of what we, what we called wabi-sabi years ago, that, that the beauty of the imperfection, those natural sort of organic edges on things, the way that, that the, the table, the flatware at the top left isn't perfect. Uh, you know, you can feel the touch in the hand of the artisan. One of my favorites is the, the pitcher and the cups down on the lower right or the base of that lamp where you can sort of feel the, the ceramic being molded to create that. And even the way that they used the um, shade in a texture, that beautiful tight pleating to offer up again another kind of organic feel to it. Um, I think this is really going to be a very uh, lasting direction. This is something that's been out for a little while and we're really seeing so much more of it as we move through. So this is something that post COVID we believe is going to be very strong. <clears throat> and we saw a great deal of it when we moved through even the top, the tabletop shows just how ceramics were being treated in general for, you know, for objects of art, for storage, for, for a tabletop, but even in something that is more finished and more polished than the flatware that we saw in that last slide. The two pieces here where they still are a bit askew, a bit hand done, not, you know, not a perfect thing. Taking their energy and their inspiration from nature, that whole idea that, that things don't have to be perfect in order to be beautiful. And, and then we move into very touching. And these I combined because a lot of this has to do with the idea of texture as well as the form. And so here we were talk when we moved through some of the shows, we saw these wonderful kinds of textures really coming to the fore. Some of them very planned, very symmetrical, very even like like on this leather, that is a leather vase that we're seeing there on the lower left in black with the highs and the lows, the indentations and the pieces that move forward. Again, those gorgeous, interesting angles. But then note right next to it, how it really has just this very sort of amorphic form, um, almost like slices of, of skin or bread or something piled one on the other, that texture and no two pieces the same. Those are the kinds of things that we're really going to be focused on, that we really love the idea of feeling the artist's hand and seeing the artist's thought process in how things are created. And as we move to, the, to, to what you're doing this season, this particular mirror, which had this wonderful undulating frame in metal of all things, I thought was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. It has a really nice flow to it that I think that when you see it firsthand, you, you really appreciate the fact that of the artisan that created it. Um, and really kind of just interpreted what we wanted. 
I think that you see a flow to that. Again, it's another thing of movement. I yeah. think you really feel in your home that movement is important and showing those things off, I think are going to become increasingly important. Absolutely. Because it's, it, again, it's that energy, that sense of connection to the piece that we have, the pieces that we have in our homes and spaces. That's one of the reasons why I love these two pieces, even though they're not the same patterning exactly the idea of what they are they almost look like if you um came up very close on a leaf and looked at the the you know the bio the 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 biometric kind of form of it um under a, un, like looking under a microscope i loved this this sense of of amoebas and and veining and all of this that this called up but also just the color the you know the color stories that you put them in really speak um volumes and i love the way that this really looks interesting and organic and then this whole idea of a frameless the frameless collection of the mirror where it kind of floats on the wall it's not a perfect shape but it's also just quite stunning just the way that it it sort of it, it almost looks like a window into the wall and i love the way this was shot where you're seeing that reflection come through it almost looks like you're looking through it and into the next place um i thought that was really beautiful but it really offers something very unique for your for your environment as you've said um and then we go to something that's even more inspired by nature and organics where it really looks like just those very natural live uh, edge wood pieces, um, but yours are not um, not just completely simple. Do you want to talk a bit about those? Well, these all these pieces, these faux bois pieces, uh, which really is just it's it's the pattern of wood mm -hmm. uh, from nature. It takes that kind of lead from nature, um, but each one is handcrafted and hand finished. And so, really, I think that you know, from a standpoint of design this is probably bringing in a piece of nature into your home. And again, with all of the texture and the movement of this, it still plays into exactly what I think is the biggest trend is adding that element of, maybe I don't have a balcony or a garden, but you're adding those natural elements, even though it's in a cast aluminum, I think that it adds that element into your home. Absolutely, that feeling of bring the outdoors in and the indoors out, um, and especially since so many of us have been, you know, secluded within our four walls for for some time now, that sense of of having that touchstone to nature, I think, is going to be even more important. Which is another reason why I loved these leaves, um, and I again that rosy sort of. Uh, gold finish was really really beautiful on the on the way that these were done so it's it's not about all um just an organic piece that is a um amorphic and 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 doesn't really um it, it's not necessarily evocative of something this also with being organic has this whole reference to the touchstones of nature and here we're looking at it where it's almost like the touchstones of seed pods again that texture that uneven pinched top um, gives you just more depth, more motion, more movement, more more of a of a sense of engagement with the piece. And I love the coppery tone. And again, as I said, I really believe that we're going to see a lot more of copper uh, coming through, as that is antimicrobial in and of itself. Um, and we're going to be looking for those things that that can be easily cleaned and that have you know bring their own element of tech of of safety and protection and uh, into the home and into our spaces as we return out into the world um, that's going to be important loved these seed pod feeling as well of, of these pieces and again that lustrous color of them um, that and the way that that they really allow for a beautiful group together um, and they, what I loved about the group is it can sort of bubble up in a vertical way but also be used beautifully in a horizontal way this is really sort of one of those pieces that I see endless possibilities in and I loved also the shading of color, the way that it sort of is subtle, subtly different at the center than it is on the edges. And again, with that wonderful organic rim. And then this one reminded me sort of a seed pot or a bean. And I love the idea of some of them being finished in that wonderful matte black, another color that we've been talking a great deal about, matte black, and how you paired it in your shot with this lustrous gold. I thought those two really sat very nicely together. But again, that whole idea of that same type of finish, but in two very different vessels. So you really can speak to a different, you know, couple, couple of different types of aesthetics when you bring them into the to your space. 
And then one of my favorites is beautiful wave pattern on this mirror. This one I did want you to speak a bit about because this is just lovely and the lustrousness. I know we've been talking about gold. Certainly it will continue to be these pewters and silvers that, that we will have in our homes as well. There's always some of both. But what I thought most was, what was most lovely about this was this gorgeous wave texture that you were able to achieve. Well, I think that what we did initially when we looked at the, the, the design of the mirror, we actually cut it in even deeper mm. because we wanted the, that fluid motion. That, that had to be the thing that was primary for the design because even with a silver leaf or a gold leaf, those finishes, we wanted that play off of, as you look at that, of where the light hits, where the light doesn't hit, and you have depth. Yes. That, that is huge for something that is going to go on the wall right now. I think that everyone's looking as to how you could add interest to the home. Yes, absolutely. And again, this is so, this is just so, you want to go out, go up and touch it. You want to reach out and touch. And the same thing happens with these wonderful little edge sitters. I love the idea of these just kind yeah. of organically dripping down the sides from the, from your, um, uh, cast aluminum and and the in the candle holders. I just thought this was really sweet. And the other one again has that feeling of almost like a pomegranate. It's a, again like a pod, and so that that sense of organics coming through and what the what the actual shape is is also quite wonderful. But again, you sort of feel the feeling. You can feel the texture in the base of that one of the hand of the artisan. And that yeah. again is one of those things that warmth of feeling the touch of a human hand that's made it of connecting to something that someone else has made. And then we went into reptile style. Certainly there are gonna be a lot of spots. We see those everywhere in stripes, those tiger stripes. One of the things that was very interesting to me in some of the shows that we were attending was these subtle uses of this reptile style and, and the petite seats on which they were used, which is what we're calling these little settees that can also have a tray or something put on top and be used as a, a small table. And I love these things because in, in spaces now where you don't have, you know, everyone doesn't have a huge space, the idea for being able to move things around and configure as you need to those petite seats we really saw a huge boom in um, in this particular category and then when I was going through I saw yours now yours are not technically reptile this one feels more like an ostrich to me but yeah. it's that whole idea of a skin and this the idea of a, again it can be a small table as you show it here in your in your um, your shot, but also you could put something, you could put something, you know, just put, pop a pillow on it or someone could sit on it. You could move it around and it can be utilized in different ways. And I loved the tray with the uh, the three canisters that, that work together. And again, that little touch of copper against the gray, um, perfect color combination there. And then here, um, I know a couple of people said to me, why is this an animal attraction? But I loved the idea of this, this, this to me feels like an enlarged, uh, reptile or an enlarged crocodile or alligator pattern, which I'm, I love um, those skins. And I just love that this is a bigger scale of hammering than one usually finds, which I also think, again, speaks to a contemporary take on it and also the craftsmanship that, that goes into creating this. But also, you know, this, this goes along with the, that small polished uh, glass top table, that little martini table that you mm -hmm. showed earlier. Mm -hmm. This smaller scale of this little stool, and it's multi-purpose stool, or it could be a side table, but mm -hmm. all of those martini tables fall in a category that I think that it's a very usable item that is for today's living. You right. know, and not everybody's going to have the basic 24 by 24 inch side table, you know. It's, right. And then can you use something that is a side table and then also like this that you could also use for seating? Yes. So exactly. we're we're definitely on trend, I think, with that. And as we move forward, I think you're going to see multi-purposed items that is going to be the hottest thing. Absolutely, that multifunction is definitely one of those things that that we def as a post-COVID thing where people have been spending so much time at home when they realize we don't have enough of this or we have too much of that. Living with things that you've had a while, the things that you love, you love more, and the things that you hate, you're going to get rid of. And so this is the kind of thing that I think can really, you know, the whole idea that it has a multi-purpose, a multifunction is one of those things that's going to be a tremendous selling point and an engage an engagement touchstone point for the for your. Consumers. Yeah, I agree. 
Then we go to Smoke and Mirrors. We started off really, um, you know, several seasons ago with the focus on marble and all the veining that was going on in marble. And those marbles were very much about black and gray and white. Um, and we started to see this movement as we talked about the misting of color. We also started to see the misting of pattern where these weren't really just specifically the way that one found it in nature, but also it was touched by the hand of the innovator, the designer, where they kind of used these forbidden kind of garden ideas and turned these into other kinds of things that could be evocative of the nighttime sky or the aurora borealis or the waves in water or the misting of, of fog. You know, it, it, they came from all kinds of inspirations and it was really quite beautiful. So this whole idea of smoke and mirrors emerged for us. And then that deepened into this whole idea there were other stones that were out there but they weren't just the typical stones that one thinks of so we create you know we came up with our still stoned uh, trend because we do still see this focus on nature this focus on using um, all of the things that are found in nature and the stones and and marbles that are found there with these beautiful veinings and lovely natural colors they aren't dyed to get some you know to get these colors this is the way that we find them in nature but the way that the craftsmanship of these stone masons is really lovely in terms of how one of my favorites is that coffee table there on the center row on the left where you, you've they've carved into it to create a place for magazines and things on the one end and you can there's you can set a vase down in that that um, indentation on the on the far left which they had on one of the other colors you can do or you can sit more magazines there but again this idea of functional in this slab of beautiful marble and then from there we went into swirled. And swirled really is about the movement of color. And again, somewhat evocative of that misty feeling, but we are so also are noticing that that swirl that started off almost like oil in water um, in the early stages of this trend is really moving into the trend of marbleized paper from Italy, as you can see in the pillow on the top and in two of the chairs, and those are not by the same vendors, which was really interesting to me. Um, so it's the whole idea that you can see this wonderful swirled pattern moving through whatever the medium is. And we also saw it with the idea of taking those stone swirls and, and playing with them again, the way that the artist or the innovator would, where they're not exactly as one finds in nature, they've been played with, manipulated in a way that makes them more interesting, uh, more of for us. And so as I moved through what I found from Howard Elliott, I saw this wonderful collection of these this sort of smoky, misty group of gray and black uh, pieces. But again, I loved the uneven sort of wave pattern of the line that moved through and then how that line was touched with a golden sort of rosy golden copper tone. Again, that whole idea of playing with mixing is something that's really important. It's really engaging visually. And it's also got this wonderful sort of tactile quality. We saw the same thing in this, this group of vases where it almost looks like, um, again, that tie-dyed fabric feeling, um, the sense of oil and water rising, almost like one of the old lava lamps, <laughs> you know, kind of a little bit of the retro feeling of a lava lamp. And then more of those pillows that we showed earlier, where we only saw the one. Now you really can see this whole collection and the second colorway that it comes in. Did you want to speak a bit about that one? Well, a lot of these fabrics that we selected to redo the inline pillows, um, we actually drew off of, of artwork. We wanted the images for the pillows, the patterns, to be something that, again, had some depth to it, had blending for it. Um, I think that, you know, these, these types of textiles really kind of add that um, softness mm -hmm. to the decor. Mm -hmm. But it also, again, shows a person's personality by your choice of by the colors, because I think that it, it adds that artistic feel, that little twist. And that was one of our big goals of how we could possibly reinvent ourselves in our inline pillow offering. Mm -hmm. No, I agree, and I think this was, my, my favorite is the blue combination, actually, but I think both of them speak volumes. The, 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 the lighter uh, colorway speaks more like the garden to me. Whereas the blue ones can sort of be garden, they can be stone, they can be, you know, right. they, can take, they can sort of go several different places. They can be clouds, you know, playing right. through the mountains. They're really gorgeous. And then we, I love this tall, thin vase. The, 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 the actual silhouette of, silhouette of this particular piece I thought was really lovely. But the texture, the way where I talked about the idea of um, marbleized paper, this one really sort of was evocative of that one for me, where you can see the striations uh, in the patterning and the color um, and that 
movement again that you can you keep reminding us of. Yeah. I think that's great. Then we move to arch rivals. Here we've been talking about the return to the um, roots of design. Arches have, be, have started to show up. First, they started for me to show up in architecture. I was seeing even in booths at trade shows, people were using the arches you can see in the lower right there um, to just move through their, their um, their booth and this whole idea, or windows as windows or doors, um, and really going back again to the roots of design. But then we started to see more and more product come through with these wonderful round arched um, arched curves. And I think that that's really interesting because again, that speaks to one of the things we talk about with comfort and taking the edge off and, and movement in a way and something that's also a bit more feminine, if you will, uh, as we talk about the importance of, you know, what, what, what we've been talking about with women's rights and women's issues moving to the fore. This is also one of those things that has a, a bit of a feminine uh, quality to it um, with in, in some ways, not to, not to say that any, everything is binary, um, but it really is just sort of really uh, this idea of that warmth of, of the arch. And when I move through some of the things that, that I was looking through your new, new introductions, these tables I thought were really lovely. I know you told me that these were evocative of, of, of things you saw when it went on a trip. Yeah, it was the, the arch windows that you saw were so prevalent in Europe. Mm -hmm. And so as we kind of played off of designs, we really wanted to, you know, as we rounded those corners of those mirrors or we softened the edges of some of the ceramics, uh, we wanted some of the, the accent furniture to take on that same feel. Mm -hmm. So by nature, I mean, the, the arched windows was the perfect inspiration because now we can kind of add those elements to some of our accent furniture to, again, just soften the whole tone. Absolutely. And again, it speaks again to architecture, going back to our roots in design. Here you see another version of it with a, you know, just a, a, a softer, less, less pointed arch, but just such a lovely little side table. Great weight of color there. And then I loved the mirror, the frameless mirrors. Again, almost like you're looking into a window into another room. Uh, I just love how this, this sort of kind of transports you depending on where you place it and what, what it reflects. And then this one where it had, you know, the multi panes, I just sort of thought was really great. Um, this whole idea of, of um, again, having that return to the roots of design and that level of, um, of silver that you, or pewter that you've achieved in this color, I thought was really good. So I wanted to show that detail there. It really is quite lovely. Yeah. And then this is one of my favorite mirrors. I love the fact that this one speaks to one of our other trends, which is the capsule uh, collection, but it's the, the fact that you've added just that rim at the bottom and that it's not even. I thought, you know, each of those sort of decisions really created this really simple but lovely and very engaging piece. Um, so I, 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 was very, I was very intrigued by this. This is another one that would be one I would want to own. And then lastly, we're going into materials. And so we talk a great deal about mixing materials. Material World was one of the first uh, of these slides that we did for that particular trend, talking about the mixing of hard and soft, of, of, of color and no color, of, 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 um, of natural materials and, and uh, man-made materials. And, and the whole idea of, of how one can really add interest and depth with a piece just in the mixture of material. Even in the table on the top left where those are all that's one table that's got two different kinds of, of marble stone and then two different colors of glass and it was all evocative of water um, and this whole idea when talking to the artist what, what he was inspired by to create that table so just looking at the different materials you have available to you and then mixing them in interesting ways and as we moved on from that trend and and, and continue to grow it which because it's really something we've been watching for the last few years this was my most recent one with material mixes where you're looking at the idea of a lot more um, of, of types of materials so the idea of that chair at the bottom where you work working with wood but then putting those acrylic legs at the bottom a bit of whimsy a bit of humor um, that wonderful um, desk there that's from a, a Portuguese company where you've got all of that that wonder those wonderful angles you're playing with color but then you you also playing with material by adding the metal legs on the far end and much slimmer and more traditional and then it grows and it morphs into this wonderful sort of much more interesting uh, uh, graphically 
uh, carved piece on the end. Uh, the idea of mixing leathers and suede was is always around, but leather and velvet in the chairs, marbles, two different types of marble with metal on the occasional tables that you're seeing. One is true marble with another marble with another stone edge and the gold uh, pieces that come up almost like the prongs for jewelry to encase it. And then the one on at the top, that's the top center. And the one on the top left, that's hand painted, refers painted glass to look like, again, being evocative of stone. And then I loved the piece at the bottom where you have the, met the, the gold leaf over one half of the table, but it pops through in the corner there on the other half. And then the wood piece where it's wonderfully mitered wood um, on the one side and that pops through on the other. So this, these feelings of, of a touch of humor um, and a touch of whimsy you know, within the product. And then that center table is a beautiful piece of marble with suede as its base. So mm -hmm. think about how you can do these wonderful material mixes. And some of the things that you guys have done to these wonderful things with the wood and the metal, the studs, the highs and the lows of the finish, really interesting, that beautiful large scale very stately, very commanding in this mirror. And then, you know, uh, to, com to the complete opposite side where you've got these lovely, charming acrylic pieces that are kind of retro and also very contemporary at the same time, both with the silvers and the golds as the, as the, the mix with the metals that are, that are being played against them. I love the, the feeling of the mirror, like, like it's being pulled at both ends to, you know, and stretched. So it almost feels like it's not nearly as solid, which gives it a lightness, which I love. Um, and then this beautiful cabinet piece where you've got um, these tiles and each one different and, and distinct and the time, you know, that it took to inlay something like this so that each one of those is in there. Again, this call to craftsmanship and this appreciation for quality. Uh, these wonderful, this wonderful little uh, side piece that can be either um, a stand like this for a piece of sculpture. Um, you could put some anything there, but I love the idea of the movement around the little uh, acrylic ball, and then the metal, the metal that holds the ball, and then the different color that you're getting within it. So there's really so many different notes that this particular one is hitting. I thought was really quite special, and it really has sort of a combination of a retro and a contemporary feel as well. And then here where you really do go back to sort of something that's a bit more traditional. Do you want to talk a bit about this one? Well, this piece was another piece that was inspired by an antique that was found in, in the UK. Okay. But it was taken a different twist. We wanted to try to play off of uh, elements that were the finishes themselves mm -hmm. that were not traditional at the time because so much of it was polished. Mm -hmm. We wanted to try to do a little more of a distressed finish for the brass. We wanted then to play off of a matte finish for the black. So you've got those two combinations. And I think that it, it kind of harks back to uh, traditional, but yeah. with the way we updated the finishes, I think that this would be a statement piece for a more contemporary lifestyle. Absolutely. I think that it really, you know, those are the things that we're playing with every day. We're just trying to play off of how we could uh, change up finishes, how we could combine these materials, but, and really update things for today's living too. Yeah. No, it's wonderful. And then we go into brownstone, as we talked about how stone has been so important um, as, a, as a material. We saw so much in the grays and the, and the blacks and the whites for so many seasons. And then we moved into brown, which, which goes back to the trend with the warmer side of the palette and the browns sort of replacing the grays in terms of the new neutrals, that warm side giving us comfort, giving us uh, you know, consola you know, this consolation feeling, this sense that we've been consoled by, by what's around us. You want to reach out and touch it. And it also just speaks to the, the, the myriad of color that, that nature has, you know, within itself. Um, and so we started to see these beautiful browns come through, not, you know, from not only in small tables, large tables, coffee tables, side tables, occasional tables, but also in countertops and in even lighting, as you see here. And so we saw this first set from you, the longer and the the longer piece, but I loved the idea of how you sandwich that feeling of almost sandwiching it with the bevel uh, that comes underneath the piece on top, and then that wonderful sort of arced piece again, that semicircle or that that half circle piece that gives you the base and the step that goes down. Every piece of this speaks to craftsmanship and to and to um, you know to thought to thinking about how this was constructed, how this was designed. One of my favorites is this wonderful wall tray with the gold tones in glass. 
glass that are in, inlaid here. And so again, it gives you that feeling of the brown stone. Um, and I love, again, that coppery finish on the rim and how wide and impressive the, the, the finish uh, of the rim is. We move into this whole idea of this slate stone piece uh, for the mirror where it's inlaid, but it, the brown again playing back against the silver. So you get the warm and the cool, that material mix that we've been talking about as well. So I think that that was really captured wonderfully in both the console and the mirror. And then we move into Forge Ahead. And this is really, as we talk about craftsmanship, we've seen so much in ceramics, so much in stone, so much in um, wood. And in the last couple of years, we really started to see this whole idea of certain types of metal moving forward and this whole idea of metal work forge forging coming to the fore. And lots of young designers working in metal, creating these wonderfully uh, contemporary kinds of pieces, evocative of pieces of art, almost like the table down on the lower left where it all reminds you of a Giacometti or this wonderful texture on the, on the table on the lower right. And that one really took me right into your beautiful cabinet here. I, can you speak a bit about the, the face of this? This is wonderful. Yeah, it, again, it goes back to being hand forged and not only just the frame of the cabinet, but just that technique of that crumpled metal feel for the doors everything is handmade hand finished and i think that you know when we looked at this this was something that we we adjusted the hardware we made that you know unique for ourselves mm -hmm. and i think that you know this feel of of metal yes. has gained a little bit in the last few seasons and i think that what it is is each artist are going to see themselves learning more about the use of metal and mm -hmm. how could we add finishes, how could we add texture. And I think that it's very exciting to see this kind of take shape. Not everybody works in metal, but I think that for us, as we kind of start to really investigate uh, some of what our vendors are doing and what we could actually apply, uh, I think it's very exciting to move forward with that. Yeah, no, I, I love the finish on this piece, the highs and the lows, yeah. little touch of the the brass that you see coming through the black, this wonderful sort of matte black. It's just, a, it's, it's a stunning piece, really. And then conversely, the very simple, uh, you know, simpli the very simple edge here in the simplicity of the steel collection, where it's just this low profile frame, where it's very subtle. Um, but I love the idea that, you know, of them in combination. So not just one of them, they really speak beautifully in pairs as you're showing it here. And I think that that's really lovely as well. And then conversely to go and, and put the multi-pane in for something that's sort of evocative, that loft living, adding again that feeling of another window into another space, uh, uh, bringing light you know, and reflection into the room with just a very simple uh, multi-paned frame. But a, simple, uh, but a simple frame though. It just, yes. you know, all of that is, is trending now where that you've got more of your max amount of space by mirror, mm -hmm. but your frame is less. Mm. Inner, it's it's got still a lot of the hand forged look yes. to it, but you really have finding that is being probably one of the biggest trends that we've added to in the last, you know, probably two three seasons. Okay. So I think you'll see more of that, where that the frame itself is is thinner, narrower, not as as big of a profile. Okay, and I think that this is a prime example because we've had the window pane mirrors before, but they've been a lot more um, wider, maybe mm -hmm. more substance to it, but you'll see a lot more of this coming forward. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And then I loved these vases, this collection of vases, again, where you sort of see the, the hand of the artist in the work, that you can feel the fingers as they pull down, but this really great um, collection of shapes. And again, one of the things that I, I do like about what you do is that it's not small, medium, and large of the same shape repeated, that you really give um, you know, this, I, the, the opportunity to sit one type of thing in one place and one in another, and they really can, they can solve all kinds of, of uh, questions for, for the consumer. I love what that looks like. And these really almost, you know, some of them are very elegant in a way that is simple, and some of them almost tip over into that, that area of the brutalist uh, trend that is very popular right now as well. And then this wall shield I just thought was fabulous, and the, and the two colors of metal, the black to the bronze, uh, really beautiful, the scale perfect, that organic edge really well done. So I thought another thing to call out, really beautiful. 
And then just the sleek and modern uh, look of this art, you know, uh, etage, this sense of, of very just elegant um, storage that you can, you can just show off. I, I mean, for me, I can see it with several of your pieces of, of art, um, you know, your, your vases either in metal or steel or in metal or ceramic um, adorning those glass shelves. But this was one of those things that was just very simple, very clean, again, can sit in so many different places. And then we go to Mirror Mirror, something that you're known for. And certainly that has been something that uh, mirrors in general, we've been noticing more and more of them. They are really the statement pieces as, as wall art has grown. Uh, and people are doing so many wonderful new things with them, either the mirror itself or the frame or a combination of the two. Here are just some that we saw out and about moving around the world. And as we move into yours, I loved this little set that really was re reminding me of, of jewelry for the wall. It felt like, you know, the wonderful drop earrings that are so on trend right now uh, that I had to call them out. Um, I also wanted to call out, not, not pertaining necessarily to this particular trend, but the, um, um, the amphoric shape of the vases that are sitting on the right definitely on trend and something to watch. We've seen so many of these amphora inspired kinds of silhouettes coming to the fore. And then we move into this wonderful, um, this, this circle that I just love the idea because it's very art deco in, for me in its, in its uh, inspiration. But we've been talking a great deal about light play. And if you look at the one that is the, the shot within, um, within the, the space, how that wonderful light throw comes off of those onto the, onto the wall, you get that fabulous shading and shadowing uh, from the light. And I think that that's one of those things that makes this very special. It's like jewelry for the wall as well. And then we move into this multiple piece where you've just got, what I love is that it, 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 the idea of repeating the same shape, but just doing the, uh, you know, the opposite, mirroring each, each other, um, and again, not bumping it up against each other. There's so many ways that you can play with this particular form. It, it speaks back to that angle and jewels that we talked about, those, those sort of new angles. Um, but I just thought this was really quite wonderful, the way that that, was, that that was displayed, but also just that wonderful shape. It's a very specific and unusual shape, but can be played together in so many different ways. And then this one, you were telling me about the springs. I want to just quick, quickly speak about what this mirror is made of. Oh, and forgive me, someone yeah. <laughs> by in New York City. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, you know, one of the things that we're looking for is, you know, the industrial feel has been big. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do is always look at something with a little twist. So when we came across these actual, the pieces that in, in go into the center of the mirror actually are industrial springs. Mm -hmm. So when we added that to the mirror, well, then we just thought, okay, it's perfect then to add then a silver finish to it because again, it goes against what a traditional, you know, Maybe it's a little darker in the finish and it's got, looks like it's just come right out of the machine and it's got oil on it. Mm -hmm. So that industrial feel, that texture always works really well and kind of take it to a new level. And then that surprises people. They exactly. say, I never would have thought that that being silver finish would have been something that's industrial. So yeah. again, it's, it's the fun of what we're doing is trying to create those new things that someone kind of has to tilt their head off to the side and go, oh, I never would have thought of that. <laughs> yes, well, that's what's great about it. I love that sense of humor because when I first saw it, especially the, the view that's head on, I didn't realize it wasn't until I saw the view that had the, the angle that I could really tell that they were the springs that you were telling me about. But I love that idea, again, of discovery within a piece too. Something oh. that engages, that brings people in, that sense of discovery and engagement is, is, is you know, gonna be very, very important as we move out of COVID. And then yeah. we moved to the Sunburst collection, and that's been certainly an age-old, you know, design for, for a mirror. But what we were noticing as we moved through the shows was that we were seeing many more uh, adaptations on the Sunburst mirror. And certainly if someone's looking for a Sunburst, you have so many from this beautiful pleated fan version into this wonderful, you know, just the, the, the bars, the, the beautiful bars. But again, I love that coppery tone. Then I like the idea that they, they can be um, used in multiple 
uh, the and then here's some of the many other ones that you're doing, but I just love the idea of all of these takes because the sunburst is something that's pretty much as old as time. But the yeah. fact that you have so many, you can speak to so many different design aesthetics with them. And this was one of my favorites. The first one that I pulled was the gold, but then in looking at your custom colors, that orange is so on trend right now and a wonderful way to bring a pop of color into a space where you may not be, you know, so bold that you want to paint your wall orange or trade out a side table for orange. But the pop of this beautiful sunburst mirror in, in um, and, and also the fact that it's almost like um, a, uh, an American craftsman type of mirror that where you've used the sort of different shapes of wood pieces to create the sunburst, but then to put it into right. the orange color. I just thought that was really beautiful. And then last but not least, this sort of pleated version of them. Um, which is really sort of the more, con it, it really is that balance between the traditional and the contemporary. And then we go into Unearthed. Unearthed is really about this whole idea of things that have had a life of their own this, uh, before. They're, they, we, we, we've gone into the earth and literally unearthed them or we've given them that finish. Certain ones of these products have been, you know, treated to look like they're unearthed and others <clears throat> excuse me, are really what nature has done to give it that patina that one often finds on copper. And we see the same thing happening in different types of finishes from the, the, the feeling of the glaze with, with um, bubbles and marbling in it to the cracked look of earth in the glaze to the newest, which will be this Reiku. Reiku is very important because it's very expensive out of Japan, the, the original Reiku. And usually you saw it in those smoky black and white and browns, but we're also starting to see it in color are coming through as well. So that'll be something that as we move forward, this whole feeling of unearth is going to take on. <clears throat> and here we see one of your console tables with that sensibility, um, with that wonderful sort of modern, almost art deco base. We see it in this beautiful pewter color to the ceramic, uh, to the vase, again, with that wonderful cross hatching texture. And that isn't it organic type form at the top, almost if, if, um, if, evocative of seed pods being unearthed, the look of the copper patina on this beautiful wide um, framed mirror, which I just think is lovely, the scale of the frame to the, to the size of the mirror, just beautiful. And again, that unearthed feeling of the patina of the, the, the greens and the warm copper tones working together. And then this one, one of my favorites where you've inlaid these coins. Can you talk a bit about this one? Well, it's sort of- long, So I hope people are okay and staying. <laughs> Well, it came about from just trying to play with texture. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I had noticed before was that, you know, in a lot of gardens that I have noticed on the walls, they embed, you know, material into the stone or into the concrete uh, for elements just from architecture to just even security. Mm -hmm. um, but I noticed that and we, when we saw this and we started kind of playing with the whole copper acid treated finish, um, I thought that, you know, we need to have that texture still play out. Mm. So even if it's copper or it's bronze, um, those two things have, have definitely been the hottest trend. And I think that, you know, adding that little bit of texture to it like these, um, yeah. you know, just adds that more interest to it to say once again, oh, I never thought of that. Yeah. You know, so we're just constantly keep looking for that stuff. I love that. I love that one. And then these reminded me again of seed pods, that sense of taking the pod right from the earth, but then working with it. So, you know, by taking it out into a tray, I thought was really lovely because, um, you know, some of the others are more evocative of the actual pod itself. But again, that ribbed finish feeling of the, of the finish, the high and low, the texture, something again that engages. I think that's really important. And we go to woodwork. We've been talking a great deal about, you know, we recycled, upcycled, sustainable, reforested. Wood will continue to be important. We're seeing it in so many different ways through so many different shows that we're attending. So these were just some of the things that we were talking about in terms of the natural state of wood, the importance of the grain coming through, and again, that hand of the craftsman and the artisan that, that can either keep it very raw, very rough, or very, or very refined and very finished. And to that end, you have something that's very simple. These, these wonderful stands that come in different heights that can give you that sense of almost the crate that something might come in. But I love the idea of just sort of how raw and interesting it looks. 
back to one of those tables that you talked about earlier that's inspired by the antiques with that great high-low finish, you know, being rubbed on it. This one with a much more solid uh, and sturdy kind of base where the other had the turned legs. So really some type of aesthetic for each, for everyone. And then the very co sort of contemporary look of just very simple, very thin um, silhouette uh, to both the legs and the table itself. So very, can, can sort of tuck away um, in a beautiful place and have a more contemporary um, feeling to it. And here you are with that, uh, you know, a close up and a, a more, in, in, a more uh, interesting version or view of that one where you really see the beautiful turned legs and how you can see that high-low finish being rubbed on there and, and adding a touch of color and having that sense of having had another life before. And then your, your chain link, this link to link classic pattern I thought was rather interesting that you did it in wood. Did you want to speak about that a bit? Well, again, I think that, you know, when we approached something, we wanted to take it with materials that were sort of uh, common, mm -hmm. you know, wood used a lot for the, for the frames of mirrors and for furniture, but how could we invoke a different feeling? You know, how could we take it and, and maybe sophisticate it up a little bit so that it's not necessarily um, traditional warm tones in a walnut or a birch finish, but how could we take it to a different level? Right. So again, we wanted to add that gold leaf, mm -hmm. just as a little bit of a, a warmth and a sparkle, playing back to again the metallics because you know metal is is going to stay and it's going to be here. How we use it is how we're really going to define the style of it. Right, but what's wonderful again, it's not highly shiny. It's not overly you know flashy. It's giving just a warmth and a luster to the piece. Right. And then, of course, these, these beautiful, just very simple stands, also speaking to that whole idea of, of forging with metal, but then very, we're very contemporary, very, very clean, um, these wonderful different heights that you can use either for the coffee table or for the side table or for stands. One of my favorite mirrors, so simple, almost like a shaker take on something, but a contemporary version of it with the deeper um, uh, silhouette to the, to the frame itself, so with a recessed mirror and so with that that's our the end of our our talk i know we've gone long but i'm certainly willing to stay on and answer any questions that you have um and certainly jody it's been wonderful just sort of having this chat with you hearing how howard elliott has really put things together the thought behind them you know what 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 your uh your inspirations were because i think that's so important with engaging all of us to understand your thinking as we talk about what's going to be new and next for 2020 and beyond uh, well, thank you very much. So does Colleen have a question? I, you, know you know what? I think we've covered nearly everything. everything. Oh, good. Um, if, if anybody has any individual, individual questions, our contact, contact information is, is listed. Um, we we have to nearly everybody, everybody for the duration, so we did a pretty good job here. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry we ran long, but I wanted people to hear the stories and really understand some of what, what the thinking was, because certainly as we talk about post-COVID, people are, are anxious about what it's going to look like. And I think you all have done a tremendous job with the types of, of materials and the types of silhouettes and the types of inspiration that you're bringing to the table. There's really something for a broad uh, group of people, but it's also, there, there's still a very beautiful brand sort of DNA that runs through it all. And that, that's consistent. And I think that's important. Well, well, we, we appreciate, appreciate you taking the time to uh, look at everything and uh, um, go through all of it. I think everybody has, has learned a lot and we will share all the slides with everybody. And uh, now everybody go into a little bit of outside time if the weather's good for you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, everyone take good care. Please stay safe, stay well. And hopefully this, this will be passed.